The National Center for Supercomputing Applications provides powerful computers and expert support that help thousands of scientists and engineers across the country improve our world. But what exactly is a supercomputer and who can get access to them? A supercomputer is a large-scale computing system. It's generally the, the cutting edge in, in, uh, in computer processing and, and uh, networking technology. The supercomputers here are um, uh, for use in the academic community. And uh, so anybody with, uh, is affiliated with a U.S. academic institution can apply for time on the supercomputers. Once you have been granted access, how do you log into a supercomputer? Like any house, a computer has an address. And uh, you log into that address, and then you give it your username and password. So when I log in, I will type the address of the supercomputer, and then you know gain access to it. And once I'm inside of the supercomputer environment, I'm able to access my files that I've saved there, um, begin new runs, copy files locally onto my desktop computer uh, off of the supercomputer. The whole process of going from starting a calculation to, to getting the data back can take anywhere from five minutes to a month. I think for smaller calculations, that can be a five, ten minute calculation, but actually getting the structure that you do that calculation on really can take a month. A different uh, supercomputer code might uh, have job submission working in a different way. In my sense, we'll go. it's a smaller script file that was written where it'll update other files in your simulation environment and then go ahead and submit it almost automatically where you're just uh, filling in certain lines and the script goes through and updates your files. One thing you can do straight off the bat is just look at, you know, look at the geometric structure of the molecule um, in one of these various programs. This is another example of an orbital of the same molecule, SCL5, where uh, this is a singly occupied orbital. So, I mean, this is something we would look at. I mean, this is a, this is a real result from a research calculation. So, I mean, one thing we might do is look at how an orbital behaves as a function of the, uh, the distance of, uh, of, of some bond breaking coordinate or something. What I'm doing is part of a bigger project where they're looking at critical points on the aircraft and looking at the stresses there. So they're, they're interested in areas that are of high stress, and which that means that they would have a higher potential for failure in that location. So you're able to perhaps design an aircraft without actually you know, building anything and then fly it and looking at um, how the stress and how the forces are laid out on this aircraft. What exactly are supercomputers used for and how are they helpful to the academic community? Most of the systems are involved with uh, Physics, astrophysics. There's all kinds of other fields that use supercomputers like uh, you know, climate modeling and modeling disease, how diseases spread, uh, weather, uh, you know, smaller scale weather modeling, and just the list goes on and on. Supercomputers are very helpful in trying to solve real world physical problems. They allow us to, instead of looking at a closed form solution, maybe on a sheet of paper, uh, it allows us to really vary our conditions and they allow it to get information much faster. For 25 years, NCSA has been a leader in deploying high-performance computer resources and in working with research communities to develop new computing and software technologies. For more information, please visit www.ncsa.illinois.edu.